Hello and welcome to Artifacts, the monthly magazine about the arts and what's going on in Minneapolis. We've got a very interesting show. I've been chatting before the show with some of our guests. And I'm calling this show Grassroots because just about everything we're talking about has something to do with art and activities and festivals from the grassroots. Now in a little while we'll be talking with Makalani, who's uh, involved in a cultural center uh, in the Phillips neighborhood, and also with Vernon Tinsley, who's involved with a festival in the north side later this summer. But first, we're going to talk with uh, Jane Evershad, who's an artist and an eco-feminist, and I'm really pleased you're here. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's nice to be here. Now, uh, I hadn't met you before today, and I understand that you're a, a visual artist and you're a, um, an eco-feminist, and maybe if you could talk a little bit about some of your beliefs and feelings and how those are coming out in your art, what you're doing with your art. Well, um, I was born in Britain, and when I was nine years old, I went to live in South Africa. And I grew up there in the paradise that South Africa is for a white person, not really knowing what was going on around me. And on becoming an adult and having my consciousness developed, I realized that I was living in a nightmare situation. And um, that was such a shock to me, it stays with me today. And one little move I made to try to change things, and I was in jail without ever having done anything. Had, I hadn't even, it was a banned meeting that I had tried to go to. I hadn't even got in the doorway, yet I was picked up and thrown in jail and told that I had a lot to learn. Jean, excuse me for a second. Explain what the banned meetings are. I, I imagine well, most of us don't know I what that is. Well, I saw a notice up for higher wages for women. You know, these women could have been green or purple or orange. And I still would have gone because I believe in the power of women and I, I want to change things for women. And the government just presumed that I was there because these women happened to be black women, African women. And um, they confronted us. I mean, they came in their tanks with guns and video cameras. That's how they find you. Sounds a little out of proportion to a meeting really, to talk about some higher wages. Absolute overkill. But still, mm -hmm. a meeting is a meeting. More than three people gathering together for a political meeting is worthy of getting thrown in jail. And that is where the, the government becomes very uh, discriminating, non-discriminating, because they'll put me in jail just as soon as they'll put the you Zulu or the Kosa people in jail. Mm. So you were arrested for this, and this was a pivotal experience. It was, because then I realized that as a white person, I was a symbol of their, their oppression. And my own white people that I live with, to them I was a traitor. So which way do you turn? So I knew that I would have to leave the country to work from without instead of from within, because I could not move inside the bounds of such injustice. Mm. Anyway, what happened was six years ago I came to this country and it was as if the weight of oppression was lifted off my right hand and I just began to paint and draw. You know, you laugh at your freedom of speech, but it's a, it's a jewel. It's a jewel, a real jewel. And I took off with that. But um, I started with the Dream for South Africa series and I was very involved in the, the oppression of the African people by the white colonialists. But then I realized that once all the African people were free in South Africa, only half of them would be free. And that is why I changed my views, because the half, half the people that are free would be the men, because it's a male-dominant society. And the women would still be slaves. Regardless of race, they'd have the same oppression right? even after some because of the other political things were lifted. All over the world, the woman is devalued and the male is glorified for some unknown reason to me. And this has helped inform then your, the artwork that's coming out to make these statements, these points. Right, that's when I realized that if women were empowered, they could use their inherent compassion in the fields of economics, politics, religion, and have their say. And, and, and I feel that there would be more fairness in the world. I feel there would be, be a more just world. And they haven't had that opportunity. Women have been stifled and stifled 
in America, it's very advanced. Um, and, but women do have more say in this country. But as a rule, they have no say. Mm. I mean, in, in Africa, um, the women are still genitally mutilated in their millions, in their millions, something like 80 million women throughout the 1980s. And it's projected that it'll be 90 million women throughout the 1990s. That's Africa proper. Mm -hmm. In India, the situation there with women and, and marrying and the woman being worth something to the man mm -hmm. in monetary value. And the, I know they've had some problems with forced sterilization and things like this as well for family planning and the like, so it goes on. Well, I'm not so sure that forced sterilization isn't a bad thing myself. Oh, really? Well, I mean, the babies are going to die. There's nothing for them. There's too many people on the earth. Mm. It's just one step behind abortion, if you ask me, mm. you know, because there's nothing to feed the children with. Although forced sterilization is, is a little dictatorial. I guess that's but what I mean. We have to stop somewhere. You know, we've got to put mm -hmm. the brakes on. Mm -hmm. I mean, the human being is not on top of the pyramid of, of the earth and the planet. Well, I'm interested in this uh, uh, bridge that you've made between your feminist perspective, that revelation you had about what would happen even if and when some freedoms came to South Africa, and that link from that perspective into the ecology and the ecofeminism. Can you talk a little bit about that and maybe how that's coming out in your artwork and things? Well, um With women are oppressed worldwide, and the oppression of the, the African people is just in South Africa. And if the women were just allowed to do their thing in the world instead of being kept down, they would be changing things. There's a lot of women power out there that hasn't been tapped into. Mm -hmm. They're so busy taking care of, of the immediate business of feeding children and surviving that they can't free themselves up. They need a helping hand. Men need to be involved in raising children. Men need to get down to that level too. I have a series in my note cards that I do um, called The Realm of the Nurturing Man. And I feel once the man comes into the nurturing arena, the woman can then leave it a little in order to make that balance in in governing, governing the people fairly. Mm -hmm. But we need that evenness. Once you have that, then you have a, a far more humanitarian approach to, to ruling the world. You know, if the wealth of the world was more fairly distributed among all species, then all species would live in dignity. And you're not talking just human beings now, but all the species on the planet. Right. I'm not just talking... I, don't, I do not believe that the human being is at the top of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. I believe it's very arrogant of us to say we are it, and everybody else better just stand The height back. of evolution. Right. Yeah. And this is going to be a big problem in South Africa, too, because, because of the very fact that the South African government has used... 80% of the land for 20% of the white population and 80% of the population, the black population, has been jammed on 20% of the land. It's, it's one of the last remaining paradises on mm -hmm. earth and what is going to happen is it's all going to go, like the elephants are going, the white rhino is slowly vanishing, but it's all going to go. People's need to survive. You know, this has nothing to do with race at all here. I want to make sure people know that I'm not saying it's bad that the African people, the South African blacks, receive mm -hmm. their freedom. I want people to be aware of the fact that South Africa is one of the last remaining gems on earth. And if, if Nelson Mandela and Butelezi and de Klerk don't get together right now, and strategize for a very good ecological formula for South Africa, we're going to lose a lot to the, a lot of valuable species, plants. And the beauty of that 
the beauty that area. Of, right. We've got a few minutes left, and I know you brought some examples of your work, and I wondered if you could talk a little bit about them and uh, describe it, if you will. And I know we've got some things we can take a look at as well. Well, I think the first piece would be to go to the, it's called Morning in the Rainforest. Well, that's M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. And here the people are um, spiritually awakened about their, their environment and they are leaning over the tree stump and weeping for the loss of this huge tree that took thousands of years to grow. And it's just mourning its death. And I wish that the people in Brazil and in the rainforest would, they are indeed coming around to that, but I wish it would be more accelerated that they would start feeling that. And uh, then moving up to the note cards now, uh, the first note card is just depicts South Africa. It's called News of Freedom Reaches the Valley of a Thousand Hills. And I painted that before Nelson Mandela was released. And then when he was released, it really felt like it had come true, you know, mm -hmm. news of freedom in South Africa. And then the next one is a picture, it's called, Hey, Psst, the Witches Are Back. And that refers to our heritage as women. You know, many of the women were burned at the stake, and we lost a lot of information about herbs, and the cauldron was a a cooking pot, it was where medicines were made, a lot of things happened around that cauldron and we don't know what those things are because the witches were considered heathens and burned at the stake. Um, and then the last one is called, the last note card up there is called The Last Species Left on Earth and the quote with that is, I have loved, I have said my goodbyes, I have felt as Mother Earth does when another species dies. And that refers to, we got to feel it, you know, we have to feel. If, if we can't feel what's happening around us, we're never going to be able to be spiritually aware enough to stop what's going on. Got to get in touch with it. Right, we've got to, you know, eat lower on the food chain, recycle, all those things that matter. Jane, in, in just a moment we're going to uh, move on, and I know you have some words to share with us, but I wanted to get in one plug. I know that yeah. some of your works are in a show that will be up through part of May, May. Yeah. and where is that, and That's where can people see it? At the No Name Gallery, and it's 100 First Street North. In downtown Minneapolis? Downtown. And, and also people might be interested to know where they can get these cards. Where can, where can they get your cards? They can get the cards at uh, Campus Cards in Dinkytown. Duda and Calhoun Square, Judith McGran and Friends, and various other places around town. The Amazon Bookstore mm -hmm. is one of them. And then just to close, I would like to read my latest work. And it's, um, I've been looking at the Bible for a lot of expelled myths. And uh, this is called The First Supper. My sister Native American, I reach out to you, for yours is the way of respect for the earth. My sister Africa, you I embrace, for yours is a compassionate race. My sister Asia, I look deep in your eyes, let us be strong together. Yes, sisters Chicano, Latino, Muslim and Jew, I am white and I am woman and I am tired of watching for centuries while my husband's sons and fathers steal and pillage. Here, I give back what I can. It is not too late for us to make a new world together. And all these cards are on recycled paper. And um, Well, Jane, I, I thank you. The, the beauty of the work and the seriousness of the topics are really quite provocative. Thanks for sharing it with us. Thank you very much, Phil. Glad you were here. Okay, thanks. And we'll be back in a moment with two more guests to talk about some events going on in the uh, Twin Cities. But first, uh, stay tuned. There's going to be uh, an interesting fact to take a look at.
And welcome back. I'm here with two guests, two gentlemen I'm very pleased to have, and we're going to talk about some events and a new cultural center that's opening in South Minneapolis. We have Vernon Tinsley here. Thank you and welcome to the show. Thank you. And we'll be talking about Juneteenth and some other activities that he's involved in. And Makalani, welcome. Thank you, Joe. And uh, Makalani is involved with a cultural center in the Phillips neighborhood, and we'll be talking about that as well. Uh, in fact, Makalani, let's start talking about that. And what is the name of this new cultural center? Um, your place or mine? Your place or mine, and yeah. where is it? And it's on 18th and Columbus, 1832 Columbus Avenue South. In the Phillips in neighborhood. In the Phillips neighborhood, yes. What kind of things are going to go on? It has it has it already opened? Maybe we should start with that. Um, it's open, but it's not a, a grand opening yet. We're going to have a grand opening in uh, July, on the Fourth of July, a, a Cry Freedom Festival. We're going to kind of block off the the streets there and. Um, uh, have some music and some dance and some vendor booths and some speakers and things things like that to open it up. But there have been people uh, coming through, uh, various groups and organizations are coming through now, holding their meetings and uh, so forth. Um, there's a uh, uh, Freedom Now, uh, a group for um, freeing political prisoners in this country. Uh, uh, meets there, and as a matter of fact, on the 11th of May, they're going to be holding a video film festival. Now that sounds interesting. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the films, or at least some of the subjects that will be part of that festival? Uh, yeah, the film festival is um, in commemoration of the sixth anniversary of the MOVE uh, bombing in Philadelphia in May of um, 1985. Um, the, the videos uh, they're going to feature is one on Mumia Abu Jamal, and he is a African American journalist uh, from Philadelphia who was a Move supporter, and because of his um, uh, writings uh, in favor of the Move uh, people, uh, the government moved in on him and um, framed him with a murder, and uh, now he's. Um, uh, on death row, and his death warrant can be signed at any time. So his uh, video would be featured along with uh, some footage of the uh, MOVE uh, bombing in 1985. Uh, also, they're going to be Leonard Peltier, going to be a video on Leonard Peltier, the Native American uh, political prisoner, and on um, Asada Shakur, a former Black Panther member who's now in exile in Cuba. Uh, along with, um, oh, the framing of the Panthers. They're going to do, they'll show a video of that. And also there's going to be a couple of workshops that's going to be held there as well. One is on um, women in prison, which is given by uh, another writer, Anzania Little Mugabe. Uh, I'm going to do a workshop on the power of the press and its um, psychological control upon the masses. Uh, Okay, and then again, that's on May the 11th, and uh, that's going to be one of the events that's happening at the Cultural Center. Well, that's interesting. Now, you have mentioned that you're a writer, a journalist, uh, if you will, uh, yes. and this is something you do in your own life as well as working with your place or mine. Yes. Yeah, I'm freelancing right now with a number of paper. I, I um, am the Southside news editor for Insight right now. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I do various... Um, work with uh, various papers around the country. Yeah. Well, we're going to chat on in a moment, but I believe we've got uh, uh, an example or a, a few moments from one of the films that will be shown May 11th that uh, Your Place or Mine. So we'll take a peek at that and be right back. After being stoned in the racist white enclave of Market Park, Martin Luther King called off a planned march for nearby Cicero. When 200 demonstrators from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, went ahead with the Cicero March, they were met by a howling, brick throwing mob. The civil rights movement was stopped in its tracks. Well, that was interesting. Thank you, Makalani, for getting that to us to take a look at that. And Vernon, I know you're involved in a number of things. We were chatting earlier, but specifically uh, in this show we wanted to talk about a festival you're involved in uh, later this summer. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, the festival's called uh, the Juneteenth uh, Celebration. And it uh, basically stems from uh, in the 1800s when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed 
the uh, slave owners didn't tell the slaves for several years after that. And when they finally did tell the slaves, there was a large festival, and uh, now that festival is kind of reclaimed as uh, just a celebration day in the cities. And uh, this year, the festival um, theme is called Family Reunion, Great Bloodlines Passing the Torch. And every year we come up with a new theme and organize a series of festivities. Uh, in the past it's been a one-day event and now it's branched off into three to four weeks of festivities and events uh, in the community. Through the month of June primarily? Yeah, through the month of June. So that's coming up. Yeah. Can you tell us some of the activities? I know you're involved with the arts and entertainment side. In fact, you're the, that part of the steering committee, you're the chair of that, if exactly. I understand. Exactly. Uh, so we put together the uh, entertainment schedule, mm -hmm. and we uh, try to stem and uh, let some of the local entertainers you know, have an outlet of expression to perform on a large stage. And uh, the event is live on cable TV, and it's recorded on cable TV. So they get, they get an outlet there to, you know, for people to see them. Um, we've got gospel groups, R&B groups, a lot of local talent. Uh, in the past, we've had groups such as Ben Vereen, Vereen that's come in and uh, participated in the event. Um, where, where does this happen? Is it in one venue or is it uh, around town in a couple or what? Uh, this year, because we've expanded to several weeks of events, it's around town. But the main, uh, the main festival is at Oak Park Community Center, 1701 Oak Park Avenue, North Minneapolis. And it'll be happening on June 15th. That's the main event right there, and other things yeah. are going on. Right. They've got a film festival, a uh, basketball tournament, uh, talent search, which is kind of like a local uh, youth talent competition, and a uh, film expose, and then symposiums. Now, this is not the first year for Juneteenth here in, in Minneapolis. How long has it been going on about uh uh, I Locally. believe the festival's been going uh, approximately six years. This should be the sixth annual event this year. Okay, yeah. And every year it's, it's expanded um, at least 100%. You know, the turnout is very, very impressive. It's supported very much by the community. The community participates, a lot of local agencies, um, a lot of local vendors. They have booths set up for artists and uh, food booths and people who want to sell their wares. And Sounds like there's a lot of support. Business. There is a lot of support. Yeah, now who comes? What, uh, wh who's your audience? And d it, it must draw, obviously, <laughs> citywide. Who's, who's showing up for uh, these events? Definitely. It's, uh, the, uh, the turnout has been, like I say, vast, very impressive. But uh, mainly it's the local uh, community people who want to participate in the celebration because they're really in touch with the purpose behind it. And uh, the uh, steering committee is a volunteer uh, group that's put together by local local people and um, community people. Mm -hmm. So they come in and they, they help delegate you know, what the event is and how things come together. So uh, the response is citywide, Minneapolis and St. Paul. So okay, we get it's a very really good the metro turnout. area, yeah. yeah. Now I know Minneapolis is blessed with a lot of great festivals, uh, large and small, neighborhood-based, citywide and all this. And I think a lot of people, millions of people, go to these and think, well, what a nice event. But I bet they don't have an idea of how much work goes into it, how many people it takes to schedule things, to arrange for all the things you need at a festival. Right. Can you give them, we're getting a little technical here maybe, but a little background on what does it take to create a festival? I mean, what kinds of people do you have to get together to to make things happen. How long uh, do you work on this well, before June 15th? To, to give you an idea, we, um, I work on several uh, annual events, um, Miss Black Minnesota pageant and the Juneteenth celebration. And uh, it's, it's almost a 10 to 11 month planning process. And we start out meeting once a month and that expands to twice a month, approximately six months prior to the date of the event. And now, um, we're meeting once a week up until the day of the event. So, so it, it really uh, accelerates as Right, you get it's closer. quite a bit of planning yeah. and we must commend you know, the volunteers on both the organizational planning committees for putting in the time and energy you know, to make the event well, I suppose just the getting, the getting together is, is a way to bring family together too in a way, if you will, exactly. besides the event itself. Exactly. Well, um, your place or mine, which is the name of the new cultural center in uh, the Phillips neighborhood, uh, is new to me, and I think it's, it's about to open. Can you tell us how uh, it came about, who, 
who's coming together on, on that grassroots level to create a, a presumably a very needed uh, facility? Uh, Michael Cheney is the um, person who has the idea of this cultural center and uh, I came along and kind of shared the same kind of idea of having something um, where the community can come in and can feel at home doing what they do, uh, you know, whether it be music or, or art or whatever it might be. Uh, right now, uh, Ch uh, Cheney and I are primarily the people um, involved in trying to put this together. Uh, there are some other groups that have been supportive uh, of the Cultural Arts Center. And being that it's just, just now trying to get underway, it's still in the beginning stages. Uh, but what we're trying to do is to uh, get the information out and to let people know that there is a place in the community where they can come and can feel welcome uh, doing what they do. Well, for instance, now I know uh, I've talked with a woman over in the Phillips neighborhood who's had uh, some of the kids around there had a real good experience in, in some theater classes they took. Is this the kind of thing that if somebody in the area, in the neighborhood, needed a space or needed some uh, support, they could give you folks a call and see what could work out, that sort of yeah, thing? Yeah, exactly. That's the kind of the idea of what we, we're looking at when people, because there's a lot of times people don't have the uh, monies to say rent out spaces at in some places you know and so uh, that's kind of what uh, your place of mind is there to do to uh, to have a space uh, available where it's not available for certain groups and things like that. Right now one more question on that specifically uh, I know you have a writing and journalism background there's a film festival come up what other kinds of art activities do you do you see when you and Michael Cheney talk uh, do you envision dance and music and all kinds of stuff there? Yeah, for sure. We want to have a lot, a lot of that music and dance. Um, in addition to the music and dance, you know, and bands and things like that, we want to have some poets to come through to do their poetry. Uh, we want to see some artists come out to display their work, uh, photographers to come out and display their work. So um, just anybody in the area of arts that have something um, to contribute, uh, to come on through. Sounds yeah. like a people place for all the arts. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. good. How do we contact you at that location? Yeah, good question. Um, it's um, the telephone number. What is it here? I got it written down. 872-7851 is the number. And uh, yeah, if you call that number, you can contact with uh, me or, or Michael Cheney, and then we could uh, let you know what's going on. Well, that's great. It's, yeah. it's a real resource to have that. And uh, I want to thank you. Why don't you mention that number one more time okay. for anybody who's interested in how to get in touch with the Your Place or Mine? Yeah, Your Place or Mine Cultural Arts Center, and it's at 872-7851. Okay. And the address is 1832 Columbus Avenue South. Okay, great. And Vernon, you've got Juneteenth coming up next month in the middle of June and some other events you're part of? Yes, and uh, for more information on the Juneteenth Festival, you can call 377-7000. Okay. And numbers three seven 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 thousand. Okay, great. Well, uh, great events and a new facility. I think we're really blessed to have uh, both of these gentlemen working so hard on these kinds of things. So, get in touch with the center, and if you want more information about Juneteenth, uh, give that number a call. I believe those numbers will have been up on the on your screen. So, thanks very much, gentlemen, for being here. Thank Hope you. to keep in touch with both of you. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Okay. okay. Well, that's artifacts uh, on a grassroots theme uh, this month. Uh, Stay tuned. If you want more information, uh, you can contact the Minneapolis Arts Commission uh, about what we've talked about with Jane Evershad or these two gentlemen. Uh, their number is 673-3006. And please do stay tuned because right at the end of this, we're, there's a calendar of events uh, coming up in the month of May. Thank you.